Hello everyone, this is Mr. Brain Junkie here, and today we're going to be talking about the season finale of Alice in Borderland Episode 8, and also what it means for Season 2. So we start this episode with a found footage of the two girls, of which one of them was murdered in the Ten of Hearts game. It looks like they're just students, similar to the girl that was killed in the first episode. Apparently soon after they arrived, they were recruited by strangers into working of what I can assume as people who monitor or set up the games. The girl that's alive even recorded specifically how to get into the place in which their work takes place. I assume this footage was eventually discovered by Arasu and we're only looking at it from a distorted time frame. We skip back to the beach and sees Arasu arrive in the lobby just in time to stop the Yakuza from killing any more innocent people. Arisu tries to convince the Yakuza to work together, but is continuously beat up every time he speaks. Uzagi shouts that the Yakuza must be the witch, since he would kill Arisu knowing fully that our protagonist cannot be the witch, being locked up the whole time. This accusation was met with a swift confirmation from the man himself and the Yakuza dares anyone to go and kill him. This is stopped by Arisu again and he admits that the Yakuza did kill someone, but not the schoolgirl. In fact, as we all suspected, he was the one who murdered the Hatter. His motives though were not what we thought it would be as it was not a struggle of power between the militians and the beach that caused Hatter's murder. Arisu theorized that the Yakuza and the Hatter were actually very good friends. Therefore, it was never his goal to take over the beach when the Hatter was alive, as he could have done so a long time ago with the manpower and the weapon he possessed. Why then did he only take over and go ballistic after his friend's death? It's simple because he blames everyone on the beach for his friend becoming crazy. Through a flashback, we can see that the Yakuza wanted Hatter to stop this nonsense called the beach, since we find out that collecting all the cards was an objective made up to simply ban everyone together. It was all a lie. The true objective to the beach was to establish Hatter's dream of an utopia. But his idealism drove him to do unspeakable things with the third rule. All who betrays the beach dies. There were also other problems such as the militians getting out of the Yakuza's control. That's right, he was in fact trying to tame all the crazies like Mr. Nosering from simply pillaging everything in sight. The Yakuza no longer wanted to live in this fantasy which was about to collapse and tried to convince the Hatter to stop. But without the beach, this also meant that the Hatter no longer had any reason or hope for living, since the sole purpose he convinced himself to have in this nihilistic world is to build this utopia, even if it was on top of lies. The Hatter then pulled out a gun and shoots at the Yakuza, instating that if he was not with him, by definition he was against him. The Yakuza reacted and shot back, killing Hatter in the process. The saddest part though is that Hatter's gun had no bullets to begin with. He would never kill his friend, but his hopelessness was too hard to bear and he chose death at the hand of the only one who he loved in this horrific world. Shocked at this revelation, Arasu then points out that the real witch is in fact Momoka, the girl who was murdered in the beginning. This is then confirmed by the forensic lady, as the fingerprints of the girl showed her holding the knife towards herself. In a fit of rage, the Yakuza continues to bash everyone in his way, hoping that someone eventually kills him, as he no longer wanted to live. The other schoolgirl confirms with Arisu that her friend was indeed the witch, and she shouts out that she's the dealer. Immediately, a laser appears and shoots right through her skull. Before everyone can shake their shock of realization, Mr. Nose Ring, now barbecued beyond recognition, rushes out and starts shooting at everyone. Just before Arisu was about to be shot, the Yakuza jumped out and took many bullets for our main protagonist while rushing towards Naragi into the flames, neutralizing both of them. I think he finally realized who the true enemy is and this was his last chance for redemption. 
They managed to burn the body of Momoka and clear the game as everyone stares hopelessly at the ruins of the beach. Before they got out, we see that Arisu took the phone of Momoka's friend and thus is where the footage from the beginning of the episode came from. We see that there are many dealers located under the subway station and they are rewarded visas when the players fail to clear the game. Usagi and Arasu then finds the underground location with the help of the videotapes, but sees the whole place is shut down with freshly killed bodies of the dealers lying on the ground. This basically confirms that if a game is cleared, the dealer of that game gets killed, therefore forcing a zero-sum situation. In this case, every single dealer was killed due to the 10 of Hearts game, probably because it was the last stage of the faceless card games. The next stage with the face cards would be governed by someone else. Mr. Assassin's Creed and Miss Blue Bikini also arrives here at the same time, since they figured out this location with the map they obtained from the 5 of Spade game. All the monitors then suddenly turned on as we see Mira, one of the executives of the beach telling them that a new round of games are going to begin. The group heads out from underground and sees huge flags on airships showing all the face cards. There are a couple of things we should note here. Firstly, it seems like the schoolgirls were only dealers who set up the games and Mira, who seems to be in charge of the face card games, is in fact the game master. Since there are numerous face cards, we can assume that there are many game masters just like Mira. Second, also notice that the face cards are given during the daytime, unlike all the other which were given at night. Also, all the games are given at the same time with their own flags indicating their game type. This could mean that the players can choose to join the specific games they want at a specific time. Third, if you read the manga, you will know that Momoka in fact volunteered to sacrifice herself for this game, as there was a rumor that by causing a hundred deaths in games, the dealer may return to their world. Therefore, she sacrificed herself so that her friend may be saved, which explains why her friend chose to kill herself once the game was lost. Lastly, it is very likely at this point that the only way to leave Borderland is to beat all the face card games, which in the process I assume would kill all the game masters. This would also probably be the focus of the second season of Alice in Borderland. So what do you guys think about the season finale of Alice in Borderland? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.